So the wife unit recently moved in and the TV she brought from her previous residence was not large enough. So she forced, I mean, she politely asked me to purchase her a larger TV, which I complied. I buy bank account. But anyway, she's left me with this smaller TV. This is a 32 inch TV, if I'm not mistaken. These TVs are measured from corner to corner. Yeah, this is a 32 inch TV. And it has this awesome little swivel mount on the back. And I figure this would be a perfect garage man cave TV. Now, here's where I plan to mount it. I plan to mount it on this lolly column right here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to manufacture a mount to work for this application. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So how are we gonna mount this TV swivel mount onto this lolly column? Well, the way I see it, we basically have two options. Option number one is to weld this mount directly onto the lolly column. However, the issue with that is the mount then becomes permanent. It's not adjustable, and additionally, if you ever wanna remove this mount, you're gonna to have to cut and grind, and it's gonna look ugly, and if you ever sell the house down the road, home inspector may give you some issues for welds and cut and grind marks being on the lolly column, so that's out. Option number two is to manufacture our own custom mounts, and that's exactly what I plan to do. So studying this TV swivel mount, we have three mounting holes, one on the top, one on the middle, and one on the bottom. I'm only gonna utilize the top and bottom mounting holes, and here's what I plan to do. I plan to take this threaded rod and bend it around the lolly column, and I'm gonna make my own custom U-bolts. From there, I'm gonna take this piece of flat, and I've already marked this out, you probably could see, but basically, I'm gonna cut this into two six inch lengths because the lolly column is four inches in diameter. So there's gonna be an inch of overhang on the other, uh, on either side. Then I'm gonna drill a hole on either side for the threaded rod to be received through this piece of flat. And the final hole I'm gonna to have to make is one in the center of this bar. And I'm gonna take a bolt, put it through that hole, cut off the head, and plug weld that bolt so that when I put this mount directly against the lolly column, that bolt is not gonna protrude out past the back face of the bar. Hopefully that makes sense. So first thing we need to do is to cut this to size and start drilling this bar. On second thought, I'm actually gonna drill these holes first because this piece is longer and I have better control over it, so it makes sense to drill the holes first. I'm changing out this bit here. I want to talk about drill press safety for a moment. So safety tip number one, always wear your safety glasses. Safety tip number two, when you're drilling anything larger than an eighth inch hole, definitely clamp down your work. It's really a good idea to clamp down your work at all times. I generally use these 11R vice grip clamps. But especially when you start to use these larger drill bits, what happens when they're almost through the metal what'll happen is these will catch weird and they'll start spinning your piece that you're drilling through like a helicopter blade. And if you're not careful, it'll slice you real bad or get you tangled up in there and you don't want that. That's tip number two. And tip number three, don't wear loose fitted clothing. Whenever I'm around the drill press, I always like to roll my sleeves back. I'm kind of 50-50 on whether you should wear gloves or not. I remember watching American Chopper as a kid and watched the guy Vinny, one of the fabricators there. Uh, he was wearing gloves, and I guess his gloves got caught up in the bit. I don't know why he had his hand so close to the bit, but he ended up going to the hospital. Thankfully, he didn't lose his fingers. But if you have sweatshirts, take the strings out of the sweatshirts, the drawstrings, and if you have long hair, just tie it back. Try and be smart, be safe. And uh, that's all I have to say. Let's cut this piece down to size.
I must say these mounts are looking fantastic so far. I've cut about an inch and a half piece of 5 16 inch threaded rod and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug weld it into this center hole here. So I'm just going to have this positioned approximately in the center here so I can fill up this little hole with weld. I'm going to do that off camera because whenever I weld with the camera it normally ruins the lens. So let me do that off camera. I'll check back in with you in a moment here. This is four inch diameter. I have a piece of steel pipe that's probably three and a half inch diameter. So let's just bend up the rod around this with some heat. And then if we always need to, we can always expand it back out a little bit. Just finish up the mounts. And I didn't wait for the paint to dry, that's why the finish isn't uh, perfect, but it's shop grade. We'll call it that. Anyway, I'm gonna set the camera up now and let's install this TV. Alright, I just finished getting everything pretty level. I may have to adjust the tilt of the TV, but let me tell you, this, this thing's freaking awesome being able to swivel around this lollycom. Like if I need to watch an instructional video on how to do a repair on a car or something, I can just swivel this around to wherever I'm working. Follow along. Man, having the swivel mount is so freaking cool. Check this out. Oh man, I should have done this years ago, but I was always too cheap to buy a screen for this purpose, but being as that uh, wifey had me buy her a new one, I guess it all worked out. There's the silver lining. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, I will catch you on the next one.